What's up, everybody? So, Charm Barista album review truly today. Before we start, I I said it in my Lady Gaga album review. Any videos that are coming out at this moment, I'm going to warn you. Cold sore, okay? So don't judge it. It's not food. It's not something left on my lip. It's just a cold sore. Okay. Now, let's get into the album review. Um, well, before we start, I just want to say, because you know I live for little story times about the albums or the eras. When I first got this album, it was actually from someone on Jan Jackson Forum. I don't know if any of you were on this Jan Jackson Forum, but it was like the official forum for, from like her website. And it was like up for like years and then they shut it down and we were all so pissed. But his name was Andy, I think. And this bitch fucking gifted me the album on iTunes and I was so happy. And I'm like, I look back at it annoyed because I was like fucking 12 or 13. And I was like, a messaging and I was like, bitch, Charm Wasted album's only five bucks, like, living for it. He was like, let me gift it to you. Like, that's how I remember it, but I feel like I really hope I didn't ask him to gift it to me, because that's fucking, that's mess. That's messy. How dare you ask someone to buy you something? Let's just hope that I didn't do that. But, anyway, so that's when I first got the album, and I remember the first time I listened to it, I was like, I love the first few tracks, and then the rest of it, I, like, never listened to again until two or three years ago, like, 2014. For some reason, I, I gave the whole album a chance, and the second half of the album is amazing and way better than the first half, so I don't even know what I was missing out on. But anyway, we're gonna tr go track by track, we're gonna listen. Actually, we're gonna do less listening and more talking, because I feel like on some of these videos I'm doing too much of playing the song, and I feel like there should be more opinions and less song, because you guys know what the songs sound like, so whatever. Alright, so Through the Rain. Bitch, this song... I feel like it takes a little too long to really get into the groove of the song. Like, okay, we're just gonna groove for a second. Mm -hmm. What it is is melodies on Fleek throughout this whole album, amazing, and throughout the song. Lyrics and melody, I love it in the song, but her vocals, I'm not loving that she's whis she is whispering, I don't care, she is whispering throughout this song, almost the entire song, up until like, maybe the last minute? Bitch, at the last minute, that's where I skip, I skip right to the end, because this is all I want to hear. That's a beautiful melody, it's beautiful lyrics, I mean it's a little cheesy, it's giving me some hero vibes, like just like cheesy lyrics, very adult contemporary type music. But once we hit the last two minutes, I'm fucking dying because I live for the climax, I live for the vocal. But it just takes a little too long for me. Like, too much very soft whispering. I live for the remix though. The, the remix at the end, bitch, way better than the original. But like I said, I like it. I just think, and I thought it was a terrible single choice. How are you going to come back with this song? Like, I just felt like it was a little just off because of how long it takes to even get to the climax. Like, people live for your voice. And it said, and it wasn't just soft tones, it was just very whispered throughout it, my opinion. But, yeah, I do enjoy it though, and I really enjoy the ending. Okay. Um, Boy I Need You, I know a lot of people hate on this song. I fucking love this song. I live for the sample, I think it's so fun, it's so springtime, it's just like, bouncy, it's cute. It's fun. Bitch, let's get into it. So I think that's a little whisper, but not as much as Through the Rain. And I just love the melody of this. It's so like um, 90s Mariah, in my opinion. Like very just bouncy. Baby, I love that sample. Are you kidding me? I fucking live for that. I even like Cameron's verse. But this and Through the Rain, too long. How is this song 5 minutes and 15 seconds and Through the Rain is 4 minutes and 49 seconds? Bitch, 5 minutes for 2 songs? I think that's a little... it's just a little much. Bitch. And I, I love this. This little call and like response section. He's like, I need who, what, for, you, uh, living. So I do love this song. I do think it's a little too long, but I actually love this song. Okay, the one. I actually love this song as well, bitch. I actually love this whole album, by the way. I forgot to say that in the introduction. 
This album is so underrated, and I actually live and love. It's one of my favorite Mariah albums. Because it's so R&B, and it's just fixed on melody and lyrics, which again, in this song, we so got. The fast little verses, like the fast melody to it, gorge. And if you just read the lyrics or just listen to it, they're all so relatable on this album. But it just is like, it's just Mariah at her best R&B version, I feel. And I'm like, I live for the I'm scared and I'm nervous line because I always will say it to people, like whenever something, like just some shit's going down, I'm like, I'm scared and I'm nervous. And everyone's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, I just wish someone would get that reference because it would be funny. Like it would be funny, bitch, if you knew what I was talking about. But I love this song. I feel like um, there's some ad libs at the end. And that little guitar too, that's going on at the end. Yes. So it's fucking ad libs. Because the ad-libs are being sung in full voice, unlike the rest of the song, which is another... That's my big problem with this album, is not the melody, it's not the lyrics, it's not the production, it is strictly her vocal... Not that her vocals are bad, it's just that they're way too soft, way too whispery. I wish the full voice needed was way needed. It's not like on Butterfly, where she was doing soft tones a lot throughout it. This one, it wasn't soft tones, it was just literally, like, I feel like she was whispering a lot of it. And, but it just shows how great the album is anyway, because even though I say that, I listen to this album literally every day and I fucking love it. And I'm not pissed about the vocal, but if most of it was more full vocal, you know, like full power, I feel like it would really be, people would appreciate it more. But anyway, this song, actually, Yours, is one of my favorite Mariah songs, and it kind of reminds me of Janet Jackson in a way. It sounds like something that would be on Velvet Rope, almost. Like, just like soft and beautiful and like, the harmonies. I think it's the harmonies that remind me of Janet. It's like a gorgeous song. But, um, there are two parts of this song that I need, we need to listen to because, bitch, they're my favorite parts. It's like two of my favorite parts of any Mariah songs. Like, top moments. Okay, let's bring it. It's over here. Mm -hmm, I think it is. Bitch, I live. This bridge, it's a gorgeous melody. Once she gives those vocals, I can't do it. And then with the soft tones, this is... Bitch, I mean, it's just like, I can't get over it. It's like an orgasm. Oh my god, I live. What I'm living for is on this song, like I was talking about whispering, she is doing soft vocals here, but it, to it totally works on this song. Like 100%, it needed this type of feel. And then mixed with the little ad libs going on, like the heavier vocal. Oh my god, this, this whole part is genius. And then, first of all, this build up. This build up, I mean, this song is just perfect. I can't. But I, we need, wow. Okay. But she's about to come for us. And hit us, hit us. Wow. I mean, wow. That song is gorgeous. I fucking live for it. It's a highlight of her career, in my opinion. Wow. Tell me how you guys feel about that song, because I feel like it's underrated, and I don't hear a lot of people talk about it, so. Um, next song. You Got Me. I used to love this song when I first heard the album, like, when I was younger. But now I see it. it's probably the worst song on the album for me. It's just, like, typical urban just typical, like anyone, it's very generic to me, but let me hear This song, I feel like Mariah is a guest on her own song, kind of like, kind of like on Triumphant, where she just seems like she's the hook girl, and then like there's just rappers. Like bitch, what? what? Are you kidding me? Oh my god. And I don't know what to do. This is a, it's a very great melody as well. I mean, she was strong with her pen on this album. Okay, I'm gonna say her parts are amazing. The chorus I don't like though. The, you know you get me? I don't like that. The chorus is boring, but the verses have a perfect melody. It's very catchy. Love. But overall, as a complete song, I'm over it. I only am here for that verse and the second verse. That's how I feel about it. Okay. 
I only wanted... It sounds... Ju you know what? Someone told... We were having a conversation about this in the Rainbow Album review, I think. Or one of them. And someone was telling me how My All and After Tonight and I Only Wanted is supposed to be like a three-part story. Which I totally hear now. Because I was saying how they sound so similar. And then he was saying like, oh, bitch, it was meant to sound similar. And that the stories in the, in the um, songs, you know, correlate. I totally hear that now. I totally get it, and I'm really actually living for that concept. She's a genius. But... Yeah, I do like this song, but because it's just like a reincarnation of my all and after tonight, I'm a little over it. Okay, bitch, but we're... I live for the ends. You know I live for those climaxes. Yep, this would this would be another song where I just skips the end for those vocals. Um, but yeah, definitely good. But be, we've heard the song before, in my opinion, in a better reincarnation. So I'm just a little over it. But clown, oh my god, girl, clown. This is one of her best songs ever. I don't give a fuck. It's so simple. The little guitar, the little. It's almost like a cappella. I feel like. But it's the lyrics. It's the lyrics to this song that are perfection. You could read it. It's just like a poem. It's such a it's such a fuck you song, but like written perfectly. Bitch. When the start of the show isn't you anymore, who's gonna fucking care, bitch? But my favorite part of this song, girl, is the bridge and the outro. Honestly, the whole entire song. I feel like it's so catchy, it's so beautiful, melodically, but once we hit that... Bitch, my fucking camera went off, I don't know why. I'm kind of really pissed about it, but... Anyway... Okay, anyway, what I was saying was, it's so taunting, this bridging clown. I mean, these lyrics, bitch, I mean, it's such a fuck you. And then these vocals at the end. I said I wouldn't play the song, I mean, I'm playing too much of it, but I love the ending where all those little ad-libs, like... Who's gonna love you and marry? You're just a marionette show, bitch. You're a marionette show. Like, she's coming at you. She's not playing with you. You literally are a clown. I live for that song. And yet, another one where I really feel like this song really would have been the best with full vocal. This one specifically. Like, yours, you can keep the softer vocal, but clown, I really feel like it should have been more of a strong vocal. But it's okay. Okay, my saving grace, I fucking actually live for. She, she took us to church again, and this is another song where I skipped the ending for the for the bigger vocals. But does anyone agree? Like, no matter what song I listen to on this album, it's the melodies that get you the best. Like, there is not one song on this album that's not beautiful to listen to. And the lyrics, bitch, every song. That you do. A beautiful bridge yet again. Bitch. This is where I always skip to the ending for these climaxes. <laughs> Bitch, you feel it. She took us to church. But I have to say, out of all her church songs, this is one of my least favorites. Only because it just is. I mean, but I still love it. I do like it. But I definitely, like... Okay, like, Fly Like a Bird, I feel like there's still a build-up, which she lives for. She loves to do a build-up to her in her songs, but, like, in Fly Like a Bird, it's more powerful throughout it. With My Saving Grace, again, with the whispering vocals for the first two minutes, it's like, can we get to where we need to go, bitch? Can we get to where we need to go? Okay, Lullaby. I fucking love Lullaby. This is, I guess, like, it's supposed to be a sequel to The Roof, like, lyrically, but... This this song sounds like a music box melody. Not literally her album, but like something you would play on a music box. Of like, it sounds like a lullaby, like like a children's lullaby. Like, it's so cute. <laughs> Bitch, that whole part, all the whole song is very just catchy to me. And again, soft vocals, but this is where it works because it's a lullaby, girl. <laughs> like, we need those soft vocals. So I really love this song. Love, it's very hypnotizing to me. 
Just like a lullaby, like she truly fit what she needed to do on this song. She really fit the theme. And towards the end, there's like a bunch of harmonies going on. Lullaby and yours, I feel like are very, lots of harmonies and lots of, um, what's the word? Not harmonies, but lots of like layers, lots of layers going on throughout the song. Like so many vocals, so many different parts going on, and I really live for when artists do that. So, love. Okay, you had your chance. I used to not like this song because it reminded me of You Got Me where it's just like kind of generic, but this one is actually way more catchier than that. And I live for the lyrics. Yet again, it's having us a relatable queen. <laughs> Bitch, she's very like... The way she's singing is so sassy. Right? In my opinion. The, it's like the tone to her voice that is giving that. It's interesting that I just don't feel a thing for the so-called love of my life. Like, this bitch is so fucking sassy and so low-key shady that I live for it. This whole, this whole song, again, live for the lyrics. And it's so tantalizing. This song and Clown, she's coming at your necks. She's throwing shade left and fucking right. And you hear it in her voice, you hear it in the, even in the melodies. It almost sounds like just the way it is, it's just like haunting do we agree so i that song really grew on me it really did i still i listen to it a lot whenever i'm just feeling in that type of mood like bitch sorry but you had a chance you know don't try to come through again bitch you're canceled okay subtle invitation is actually my one of my favorite mariah songs as well it's like it's so different for her it's so like jazz lounge type of song these horns these, it's jazzy i fucking live I feel like she needs to do way more songs like this type of song. Bitch. It's, wow. I don't even know how to explain this song, but for some reason it just gets to me 100%. Let's get to the chorus though, because I love the chorus. This is another song though that I need full vocal on, because once you get... I just can't get over it because so many of these songs would just really benefit from that. But I saw one of my subscribers, Johnny Blaze, commented on some video saying that this is either his favorite song or it used to not be his favorite or like he didn't like it or something, something along those lines. But for me, it was instant from the first time I heard it. It was just so perfect to me, especially towards the end. Bitch, give me those ad libs. Bitch, come on. <laughs> Bitch, I fucking live for it. It's so different for her. I would live for uh, more songs like this. Like, very jazzy, some horns, a little low-key, very sexy. I'm fucking living for that. It's a totally different vibe for her. Okay, bring it on the heartbreak. Giving us a rock and roll cover. She loves to do that shit and make it slower. I like this song. I actually really like the song, but, but, again, this is another one where I skip to two minutes in every time. I always skip to two minutes in on this song specifically because that's when it really starts to build up, it really starts to get impactful. Like I said, I know she lives for the, for the build up in songs, but on this album, sometimes they just took too long and they just weren't interesting enough in the beginning to catch my interest throughout the whole entire song. You feel me? So it's not that I don't like build-ups, it's just that on this album, they were way too slow. Way too slow, honestly. Okay. I fucking live with Sunflowers for Alfred Roy. The song is so fucking sad. And gorgeous and beautiful. It reminds me of Petals. Like, just like, you know, very personal, very like atmospheric. Like, I feel like I'm on the, at the waterfalls, girl, with the birds chirping, like, in nature. But what my favorite part of the song, besides the gorgeous melodies, as always, is I think it's somewhere in the middle. Where is it? Girl, I'm picturing you and talking about heaven, by the way. Oh my god, girl, that is just so sad for me. I can't. That's a critical cascade. But no, we've got my favorite part right here. Bitch, you don't. That heartbreak, girl. Oh my god, goosebumps during this part. 
I can't even finish it because that bridge just gets me too good. Like that is so sad, and like you, I get goosebumps every time I hear that part. You just hear like the heartbreak in her. Ooh, live, live for that song, gorgeous. Um, and then it ends with the remix of Through the Rain, which I fucking love. This is this is iconic. It reminds me of just like a '90s R&B jam, like with all the background vocalists serving a little ching chimes here and there, right? I said, bitch, what's going on? I said ching chang. What I meant to say was they, they're they chiming in. What the fuck am I saying? Like they chime in all the little background singers. Very 90s R&B. I, I think I like the remix way more than the original. It's more just typical. It's more Mariah to me. But, um, okay, so overall, I love this album. I really do. I always listen to it when I'm in a certain mood. It just, like, gets me to where I need to be. This album and Memoirs that have been Imperfect Angel to me are her best, like, written albums. Does that make sense? Like, I feel like the melodies and lyrics on this album and memoirs are gorgeous. They're, like, perfect. And they're both very similar, like, very R&B, which I've learned that I really love, like, just simple R&B music. Um, so that's how I feel about this album. I really enjoy it. The one, the literally one problem I would have with it is the soft whispers throughout a lot of songs. That's the only problem. But I can even get past that just because it's, the actual songs themselves are amazing. So, not a problem to me. So let me know your favorite songs from the album, your least favorite songs from the album, and um, I guess that's it, bitch. I was gonna say singles, but like honestly, I don't remember. Like I feel like at that time, it didn't matter what singles were; it just wasn't gonna happen for her. It just wasn't gonna happen. It wasn't. So yeah, let me know. Discuss in the comments. I'll be there writing shit with you guys. And um, thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe for some more. And thanks for watching.